the NFC East, but let's focus on the Eagles. That highly touted offense just hasn't lived up to expectations. Some might even call it putrid through the first two weeks. One explanation for their struggles could be that opposing defenses know what's coming. That's the story Philadelphia wide receiver Josh Huff was telling the media on Tuesday, two days after the Cowboys beat the Eagles 20 to 10. But by Wednesday, according to Chip Kelly, Huff's story has changed. Here's Kelly and Sam Bradford on the predictability of their offense. I just asked Josh, did, do you think they had any of our signals? And he said no. So, so, what's, so what's he, where's, he, where's this coming from? Uh, that I don't know. I just asked him a second ago. So Josh, do you think that they're picking up on things? And he said no. So, Have you heard that before from um, other players on the team that they, that they were... No, I mean, I think there's certain things that everybody does that's predictable from a tendency standpoint. When you line up in this formation, 75% of the time you do this, 25% of the time you do this, but there's nothing I don't think anybody does offensively or defensively that's 100% of the time. I've said all along, it's not the most complex offense in the world. I think, you know, we try to play fast, but, you know, when you play fast, I think we do have certain tendencies. I think, you know, Dallas did a good job of recognizing some of those. Um, but, you know, like I said, we have answers, you know, regardless of what the coverage is, you know, we've got answers and we've got to be able to get to those. All right, they have answers, Skip. Has the NFL figured Chip Kelly out? I must say my Dallas Cowboys certainly have. I think we saw that two straight years in Philadelphia. Okay. And I very much figure that Todd Bowles and his New York Jets defense will continue to expose Chip Kelly's college offense, his Oregon offense, mm -hmm. as little more at this point than a lame duck attack, if I, w if I might. Okay. And who better to call attention to this, to call it out, to drag all this out into the spotlight, than a former Oregon duck named Josh Huff. Chip drafted Josh Huff in the third round, 2014, out of Oregon. Mm -hmm. So who better? Thank you very much, Josh. Even though naturally Chip Kelly said that Josh didn't say what I heard, we all heard him say, but Josh wasn't referring to signal stealing, mm -hmm. to, to cheating of any kind. Mm -hmm. He was referring to tendencies, predictability, mm -hmm. and who better to hear that Cowboy players were calling out plays before the snap then a Josh Huff, he's a backup wide receiver, but he is a wide out, and he did play. Got it. So he's going to line up wide occasionally on the side that features the Dallas Cowboys. So he can hear them yelling the play as he lines up at the wide receiver spot, right? Before the ball is snapped. Right. So I thought Sam Bradford was, was very honest, maybe painfully honest, because he's the first to say, what we're doing is not complex. We're trying to beat you with mm -hmm. tempo, right. with fast break. But what we're doing, I'm paraphrasing slightly what Sam said, very honestly, we're, we're simple. We're not going to beat you with creativity. Mm -hmm. We're going to beat you with speed, mm -hmm. okay? With snaps, snap, 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 right. before you can get set. Well, that's very interesting to me because Rod Marinelli, coordinator of my Dallas Cowboys, has has figured out those tendencies. And Chip agreed that 75% of the time out of this formation were probably going to do that. Right. And maybe they were just guessing right all, all day on Sunday, mm -hmm. holding, again, your, your not your Eagles, but those Eagles right. to, to barely, what, what did you call it? You said the score should have been 20 to 23, 20 three, right? 23. Yeah, so they should have had three points at home. Really? So they did get in the end zone late, thanks mm -hmm. to Jordan Matthews' touchdown. But my point is this. Chip Kelly wants to be the star of the Philadelphia Eagles. And we agreed in the offseason after he made move after bombshell move mm -hmm. to remove this guy, this guy, this guy. It's Chip's show. Right. He's the center of attention. He's the ringmaster. Okay, show us, Chip. And so far, so bad. Because, remember, his quarterback, Sam Bradford, whoever, Nick Foles, whoever it was, he, he won't allow them to check out of bad plays. So, so the defense, even though the snap's coming quickly, you can do whatever you want on defense. You can set where you're going to set, and he's not going to check out of it because his coach won't allow him to audibleize. While Tony Romo drives me nuts half the time when he was playing, but he's Peyton Manning. Tony's like, oh, 
up, blah, 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 blah. And he's telling Dez when Dez is playing, you know, you do this, you do this. And it, after a while, the, the clock's going down to two before mm -hmm. they snap the football. Mm -hmm. Well, the Eagles don't want to do that. So whatever defense you set in is set in concrete. You don't have to worry that they're going to trick your defense. Yeah, but what I'm trying to, I understand that. Yeah. And I appreciate the explanation. What I'm trying to gather is, what are you peeling from this? Do you think that's a problem? Huge problem because now that people are on to that tendency wise, maybe Chip's going to flip the script this time and try to run this out of that formation. Mm -hmm. But I think Chip is one of those guys I always talk about. He walks in the room, he's walked in this room, and he thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. And a lot of times he has been the smartest guy in the room, but he's going to dig in and show you, prove to you, I'm the smartest guy in the room. So is he going to change personnel this week? Mm -hmm. Nope. I'm Chip Kelly. I don't change personnel. I don't change horses in midstream, nor am I going to change my attack. Watch me. Watch it. It, it will work. Once again, very, very early in the show in this week, you have utterly disgusted mm -hmm. me. Good. You have gotten on my I like nerves. That. That because you have happy. forced me, you have forced me to do something you know good and damn well I don't want to do. Yeah, you and that's do. come to the defense of Chip Kelly. Yeah. I, I don't want to do this. You, you, you're, you're forcing my hand because I am a fair-minded and objective human being who thinks about fairness. And even when it comes to a guy like Chip Kelly, who I obviously am not very fond of. Nope, you're not. Let me say this. You, and a typical sports fan that is like you, because most sports fans ain't like Skip Bayless, but in this particular say, instance, but in this particular, He's ride or die. but in this particular instance, they are, you must make up your mind. I'm going to use a basketball analogy. When the Lakers had Showtime, because Chip Kelly wants to be a fast break kind of offense, right? So who better to bring up than Magic Johnson and the Showtime Lakers? Who did not know whether it was Rambis or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or Worthy getting the ball, the rebound, that the ball wasn't going to go to Magic, whether it was Norm Nixon and Byron Scott on one wing, James Worthy on another, Cooper trailing, that, that, that Magic was not going to have the ball. He wasn't going to go to the middle of the floor, the floor and lead the fast break. And in the event that it didn't work, we were going to come back down, slow things up, and throw the ball inside the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the sky hook. Primarily, primarily on the left block so he could turn around with the right and, throw, and use the sky hook. Everybody knew that. But... What you gonna do about it? Michael Jordan is the greatest player that I've ever seen. We all knew what Michael Jordan was gonna do, but at the end of the day, what you gonna do about it? Bill Belichick with Tom Brady. We all know that Tom Brady is a bad boy. He ain't the bad man that Aaron Rodgers is, but he's a bad boy. He's but, the in the, man. But, but whatever. But at the end of the day, what you gonna do about it? See, that's the issue here. Okay. And so what I'm saying to you, I'm just saying to you to make my point. Mm -hmm. When we talk about Chip Kelly, in fairness to Chip Kelly, I believe he's absolutely right when he says, considering the film studying and all the dissecting that goes into coaches game planning for a particular opponent, everybody pretty much knows what you're going to do, not all the time, but most of the time. The question is, what you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. So if Chip Kelly deserves blame for anything, I don't believe it's for his schemes. I don't believe it's for his lack of football intellect. Yeah. I believe it's because of his moves that he made as a general manager, yeah. instituting, uh, you know, implementing some of these new, these nine new players mm -hmm. into his system. That's where I think the problem lies yeah. with Chip. With Chip Kelly, is Byron Maxwell worth the sixty-one million dollars you're paying him? What about Walter Thurman the third? How you feeling about him? Should you let Evan Mathis go? What about LaShawn McCoy? What about Harriman, should you have kept your word and up and took care of him contractually? Deshaun. No, the, the, you know, Deshaun Jackson yeah. before that, Jeremy Macklin yeah. this offseason. Should you have paid the money and kept him? Those are the those are legitimate questions against Chip Kelly. Okay. But not from a schematic perspective, because I think to most for most for the most part, everyone knows what you're going to do. The question is, can you stop it? Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's my problem with your analogy. 
Chip Kelly wants to be Magic Johnson. He wants to be Kareem and MJ and Tom Brady mm -hmm. because he doesn't have a Magic on the football field that I can see. Not yet. I don't see one. Do you see an MJ? Do you no. see a Tom Brady no, no. out there? No, because he doesn't care. They're all cogs in his system. But that's what I'm saying. We yeah. agree on that. Yeah. My point is that's what we should be attacking him for. The personnel changes that he made a court, you know, in, in alignment with what he wants to do on the football field. Yeah. But I don't think that it should be a story that Huff or, or Sam Bradford are saying that we're relatively predictable because I think for the most part, most of these most of these teams are predictable to opposing coaches. The thing is, there's but so much you can do about it. When we talk about Megatron, or we talk about the the, the catch, it was a catch. Mm -hmm. Who in God's name didn't know? That that ball wasn't going to Dez Bryant. We knew. The question is, what you going to do about it, Green Bay? Mm -hmm. And when Dez went up and got the ball, the only thing that did something about it was the ground and the officials. Okay. The opponent for the Green Bay Packers going to do anything about it because he couldn't hang with Dez Bryant. That's all I'm saying. That's it's what Kelly. I used to say about Deshaun Jackson and what I used to say we, about LaShawn McCoy. What are you going to do? That, How that, are you going to stop him? Because I don't saying. know. So again, They're too good. So again. We're not talking about Chip Kelly schemes. We're talking about Chip Kelly, the personnel guy who've dis who's decided, I didn't need those guys. Yes, you did. Therefore, we wouldn't be talking about predictability. We'd be talking about, so what you know what he's going to do? What you going to do to stop it? Okay, so let's look at DeMarco Murray. Mm -hmm. Chip pulls off the ultimate, watch this. Watch me. Watch this. I'm going to tweet Dallas. I'm going to ruin Dallas. And I'm going to bring him into the fold for X, whatever it was, 24 million guaranteed. Right, right, right. Way overpaying for DeMarco at this stage and age of his career. Mm. That's just me. That's just you. But am I going to change my offense? Nope. Am I going to line up in the I formation and hand it to DeMarco the way Dallas sometimes right. is? Nope. Not going to do that. So I can even make the case now DeMarco's got a hamstring issue. Mm. Maybe Ryan Matthews is a better fit for because they already had him. Well, in you, the fold. You, you, Maybe you he's can, a better fit. Make, Maybe they'll be look, more dangerous. Look, look with all due respect, you can make the argument that you're a better fit than DeMarco Murray, considering, I mean, you got 11 yards on 21 carries. Was that minus one, minus two yards? I mean, who the hell? I could do that. Hand me the ball and let me just drop. And I'd still average as many yards as DeMarco Murray is running. Yeah. I mean, come on. Literally. This is not an exaggeration. It's not an engagement in hyperbole. I could literally get handed the ball by Sam Bradford right now. Stephen A. at 47 years of age on an NFL football team. I believe you that. You can hand me the ball. I, I believe You that. can hand me the ball and I literally can drop on the ground and average just as many yards as DeMarco Murray is, is right now. That's just a fact. So the point is, again, we ain't talking about the, we're not talking about his schemes. We're talking about what he has chosen as his personnel. It's one of those, th th at the end of the day, this is what it comes down to. Some coaches, most coaches, mm -hmm. have no business being involved in personnel decisions. They just need to coach what the GM gets them. Mm -hmm. Because when they get to make their own decisions, it usually does not work out for the better mm -hmm. in football. Maybe in basketball it might be a little bit differently, but in the sport of football, as complicated as it is, the 53-man roster, offense, defense, special teams, the personnel, the depth that you have to have at each particular position, it's just entirely too much for a coach to have to deal with. He should not have that, that responsibility. That's what the argument that can be made here against Chip Kelly. Well, you love you some Chip Kelly. I got to oh, say. Don't that say was that. great don't, defense. Don't, don't do that. Chip Kelly don't versus Todd Bowles? I told Bowles? you. I'm the ultimate district attorney. Man. Yes, you are. He's just fair. I'm fair. just fair. Yeah. But I'll take You're you out. You're here for the people. I'll take you, you out. I'll you, convict you. will take yeah. any case and try to win it. Right? I, would, I would win most cases. Mm. Unless Please. opposed you got to believe in yourself before anyone yes. else does, Please. right? You know, yeah. you know it. All right. So Eagles Jets at 1 in East Rutherford, New Jersey. We will certainly be watching. We go from one 0-2 team, the Eagles, to another. That would be the Seahawks. Cam is back, but what did he gain by returning? We'll get into that next week.